Hello. I'm going to assume the viewer is familiar with the recently found Jump Desync, first of all. If not, there is a link to it in the description of this video. This is essentially a generalization of the same trick to the C-Stick. Namely, for an input done with the C-Stick, it seems that Popo generally requires a slightly smaller deviation from the neutral position to actually do the desired action than Nana does. To demonstrate this, I have a window open that represents C-Stick inputs in terms of a horizontal variable and a vertical variable, both between 0 and 256, with 128 being the neutral position for each. So, allow me to demonstrate this with up smash and down smash, for example. So, I'll start with up smash. So, let's say I make the value, the vertical value on the C stick, 181. That makes Popo alone up smash. And let's say I increase it to 182. That makes Nana up smash. Past this point, neither of them are going to do anything, but if I dip below either of those thresholds and go back up again, I can make either one up smash individually. So if I go back to 181 and up to 182, Nana will up smash. If I go to 180 and up to 181, Popo will up smash. Similarly, I'll show this off with down smash. So if I make the vertical value 75, Popo will down smash. If I decrease it to 74, Nana will down smash. Moving around below this point doesn't do anything, but again, if I dip above the threshold and below it again, I can make either one down smash again. So if I go up to 75 and down to 74, Nana will down smash. If I go up to 76 and down to 75, Popo will down smash. So note that the difference between when Popo and Nana will act is very small, so it is very difficult to do this in practice. That said, if you're willing to recondition how you do a lot of inputs and have a decently steady C-stick that isn't prone to wiggling around, there is a trick you can do to make this sort of desync much more feasible. As you probably know, if you plug in or reset a controller when you're holding an analog stick strangely, it messes with what the system parses as said stick's neutral position. In this case, I specifically have it set up to think the neutral position of the C-Stick has a vertical value of 75. As you can imagine, this can be tricky to set up, but there are visual cues you can use with the character select screen to make it easier, which I'll talk more about later. Anyways, let's talk about some of the applications and other consequences of this. If the game is already reading a vertical value of 75 or lower on the C-Stick, Popo isn't going to down smash. For him to do that, said value needs to go above 75 and then add or below it again. However, decreasing it from 75 to something lower will cause Nana to down smash, and as long as the value returns to 75 and nothing above it in the meantime, Popo won't. Similarly, if the value dips above 75 and returns precisely to 75, only Popo will down smash. With the C-Stick calibrated this way, both of these are quite doable. Very slightly pressing down on the C-Stick will only cause Nana to down smash for reasons that are evident with the prior explanation in mind. Similarly, you can press slightly up on the C-Stick to make the value dip above 75 on the C-Stick, so that it will go back down to 75 precisely, and only Popo will down smash. You can still do sync down smashes too, by, well there's just a few ways, you could hit farther up on the C-Stick so that it dips a, dips a bit below its neutral position before rebounding to it. That might not work so well with some C-sticks, but you can just move the C-stick up and then down again to make it go clearly above 75 and then temporarily below 74. So both the ice climbers will down smash. So what does this all mean? What this all means is that with the C-stick calibrated this way, you can do very quick and pretty easy desyncs with no prior setup. You can desync straight out of a walk, a standing animation, or a crouch, and you can do the first action with your choice of Popo or Nana. So I'll try to show off a few of these. My C-Stick is kind of wiggly, so it might encounter some difficulties, but let's see. If I, by very, very slightly hitting up on the C-Stick, I can get only Popo to down smash. So let's see some of the things you can do out of that. Something like that, for example. This is a very quick Popo down smash to Nana pulp. On the other hand, you can have Nana do stuff first by hitting down slightly. 
And I personally find it a lot easier to do this consistently because you're not relying on the C-stick rebounding in a strange way. You're just lowering its value and letting it go back to neutral. So, for example, you can do stuff like that. No setup. You can do it out of a lock if you want. Standing animation. You could also do it out of a crouch if you wanted to. Well, I interrupted the down smash with a blizzard, but you get the idea. It's hard to do the ones where Pogo acts first, but if you can do those, you can do some pretty quick things. Like the Nanopult I already mentioned is very fast. I didn't get the dash in there, but let's see if I can get it with this. Okay, there I got one. Something like that. It might be easier with other C-sticks than my one, but yeah. Those are some pretty good examples of the sorts of things you can do with this. Or if you want this to be silly, you can do stuff like this and just walk around and have Nana down smash over and over. If this has piqued your interest, here are some visual cues you can use at the character select screen to help you calibrate the C-stick accordingly. What is currently pictured is what the character select screen should look like if you have the C-stick in the right place prior to resetting your controller. There are many ways of identifying this particular angle. I personally note the way the tip of Mewtwo's head barely clips above the ready to fight banner. After you reset the controller and have the C-stick in its neutral position, the character select screen should look like this. Again, there are many ways to note that this is actually correct. My favorite distinguishing characteristic here is the way the ready to fight banner barely eclipses the white boundary at the bottom of Peach's character select screen portrait. I would still recommend testing this in-game anyways beforehand to double check that you got it right. Unsurprisingly, this does have some obnoxious consequences, all of which can be worked around ultimately, but not very easily. First of all, you can't up smash with the C-stick. Hitting up on the C-stick while on the ground will cause nothing to happen at first and will cause a down smash once you release the stick. This isn't too big a deal since you can always up smash with up and A. You might think up smash out of shield would be a bit harder too, but it's actually pretty easy still if you just let go of the trigger right before doing the jump input so that you don't accidentally grab. Next, up air and down air are really difficult to do consistently with the C stick. I'd highly recommend just using the A button for both of these because it can be difficult to get an up air or down air to even register, and sometimes you'll try to up air and a down air will come out or something like that. So I would just avoid the C-stick entirely for those two aerials, which is still quite doable. However, what's possibly the most annoying thing to work around is that down throws will be buffered automatically with the C-stick calibrated this way. So whenever you grab somebody, Popa will just automatically down throw. You can mitigate this by headbutting immediately, the instant you get a grab. But Popo will just down throw again right afterwards, unless you start holding up on the C stick during that pummel. Because holding up on the C stick will make the game think the C stick's closer to a neutral position and won't buffer the down throw in general. So, so more generally, I would recommend trying to just hold up on the C stick before the grab even connects. But that is quite awkward to do. Using a claw grip can make it easier, but it's still somewhat difficult and is probably the biggest drawback to doing this in the first place. I do think it can be worked around, but it's not terribly pleasant. Lastly, this makes dropping from the edge a little bit awkward. You can't drop from the edge in any of the standard ways. The joystick won't do anything. You can still roll from the edge, jump from the edge, or do a get-up attack, but dropping from the edge is going to be somewhat difficult. You can drop from the edge just by hitting up on the C-stick, because that'll cause the C-stick to bounce up, then down again, causing Popa to drop from it. And alternatively, you can just start holding up on the C-stick before you grab the edge, and then just try to do a standard option while holding up on the C-stick. And that's actually not too difficult, but it's still something to keep in mind. So far, I've only talked about doing this with down smash, but there isn't any reason you can't do it with any of the other smashes either. So, for example, right now I have it set up so that up on the C-stick will make mana up smash, and down will make Pobo up smash. 
And this does have some interesting merits. For example, Nana Up Smash on its own is a pretty good anti-air. Like, normally it's seen Up Smash is kind of risky as an anti-air just because it's such a long move. But if Nana alone does an Up Smash, which I apparently can't do right now, but okay, there we go. If Nana alone does an Up Smash, that is pretty safe because you still have Poco to move around and do other things if necessary. However, this does have some similar drawbacks to the down smash, such as the difficult up airs and downers with the C-stick, the strange ledge behaviors, and in particular it has one other rather obnoxious property, which is that when you shield, although let me readjust this a bit. Okay, there we go. Let's see if it was slightly off control. When you shield, it makes only Popo jump. Because when I'm doing the up smash, I wanted to have a vertical value of 181, which is, as you might remember from the jump to sync video, the value that will make only Popo jump and not Nana. So that means that you can't just really shield in a typical sense. If you want to shield, you need to do something like hold down on the C stick first because that'll make the game think the C-Stick's near neutral. But otherwise, this is going to happen. So this isn't intrinsically bad. You can do really quick desyncs out of this, just boom, like that, just shield ice block. One of the fastest things, one of the fastest desyncs you'll probably see ever, but it does come at the big cost, like I said, of having a difficult time shielding. It means that every time you want to shield, you have to sit down on the C-Stick first. Unless you want to just jump out. And forward smash, I'm not going to show that, but it is another interesting option that has similar drawbacks to this. If you do this with forward smash, you're going to roll every time you shield unless you hold the C-stick appropriately. And forward smash also has this, as you can probably notice, it has this issue with symmetry where you have to make it either a right forward smash or a left forward smash. And if you do that, all of a sudden, which side of the opponent you're on is going to have more significance than it really has any business having. So, I would not recommend doing this with forward smash. Up smash is interesting to experiment with. I think it overall has better neutral options than down smash does, actually. But it just comes at the cost of making shielding weird. And I should also mention that, since you can't buffer up throws, this actually won't affect grabs at all like down throw will. So this is something else you could play around with if you wish to. I will now give some closing thoughts. First and foremost, I do think this is an interesting option that is definitely worth exploring. You get quick and powerful desync options to work with, and the negative aspects can generally be negated via comfort with the non-standard inputs demanded by this technique. That said, I think this is very unlikely to become a standard part of the Ice Climbers metagame for several reasons. First of all, the details of the C-Stick in question seem to matter a lot. I personally would be uncomfortable using it in tournament because, as was quite evident in this video, the C-Stick on my main controller tends to drift around very slightly in a way that occasionally makes it difficult for me to do what I want to do. Secondly, the fact that it is difficult and potentially time-consuming to set up is a concern. Whether a tournament organizer would be willing to let you sit down and take 10 tries to get it right, and then quickly test it in-game to make sure you set it up properly, is not obvious. That said, I still view this as too interesting to overlook. 